This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We have already had church. We could like go home now. There's a few things I need to say as why I'm letting the music take a vacation. I made up in my mind right after COVID that I would no longer preach where there is no assignment. Now, I know my church is here, but I want to hear from this fellowship. Yeah. I want y'all, I want KCFM to be friendly. Because there are folk who have preached for a living and now they can't live no more because there's nowhere to preach. The hustle is over. Ain't no more two week tent meetings, revivals, and surely ain't no more casting out of devils. And long time since I've seen blind eyes open. So when this particular appointment came across my desk, I used no secretary for the answer. I did the call myself. Hear me, I know you don't care, but I did the call myself. And I asked the Lord, is this your will? Because Orlando's full of haters. It don't bother me to say it because I don't hang out with none of them. I've been preaching 40 years. And I was in my 20s then. And when I heard of her convocation, I was just sitting around with some young men, Keyshawn and Jamar, these young men who I know. And they eased it on me playing around. If, if, uh, if Bishop Franklin were to call you, would you consider? I said, my answer is yes. Then I asked for a phone number because I didn't want no secretary. Because to build an effective relationship, you must cut out middle people. And the real problem, don't worry, I'm going to catch on fire in a minute. But the real problem in black ministries is the undertone of jealousy and allowing people to get in our ears about each other and say some things that are just not true. See, a lot of folk would get up behind that preach, hoop, holler, but it's not authentic because they came for a job, not for a relationship. I don't need a job. If I don't preach no more, I'm blessed to the day I die. And that's for real. But this woman of God, this primate, this presiding, uh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As loud as you can, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Who's born on June the 16th on this side? Stand up, let me talk to you. God, and to the person on this side towards the back, they say, well, maybe he is a prophet. We don't even have time to address that. I won't say what role you in because it will basically. A lot of folk cannot get what they expect because they inspect too long. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, talk to me, liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
If anyone near you is too quiet, don't get too close now. Because they're dangerous. Only snakes are quiet till they open their mouths. You got to be quiet, man. You got to be careful. And I didn't come as one of those preachers who would red, yellow, black, brown, green, green. Right? Talk to me. All right. So I, um, I want one of them preachers who stayed in the office and wait for a grand appearance. Even though I deserve one after 40 years, you know. I want one of the pastors of Orlando that accepts an appointment but comes without their people. I told my whole church, get here. You never expose your church to what's dangerous. Can I get some talk over here? You have the marketplace in your hands. A lot of folk want to talk about your ministry, blah, blah, blah. But God said your ministry is the marketplace. That God is shifting your narrative. And God says what didn't work the first few years of your life is about to work now. As a matter of fact, and y'all don't have to pray, it's going to be scary when it happens within three to four months. Because God said, tell her, her season of struggle is over as of today. Now, we don't, we don't praise God just for ourselves. God said, I want to reward her for 16 years of delay. Whatever he had for you was never denied. But God said, if I'd have gave it to her when she wanted it, it would not have lasted. He said, but now I'm going to mashandai. Hey, presider. Presider. Mashaya. I want to say to you that if I can get 50% of your church in mind to actually, with no music, praise God for you, your new building is given keys. This building, let me fulfill my assignment. We can do this. This building is not supposed to be occupied. God says someone is already doing the hard work for a different type of business. He said, but the keys are being placed in your hands. God said, no more prayers about property and moving. God said, I'm about to give you a place called home. Y'all ain't. Are y'all jealous or are you jubilant? Now, I know a lot of folk want prophecy with the drama. Bam, 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 yeah. But we have to hear. We have to be able to listen. Everything you ever needed from God, Sister Cheryl Green, is about to be supernaturally given to you. The scripture that wants to seal it is... Your eyes have not seen. Now, I teach my church and I want to teach all of you. If God is speaking to somebody in your section, don't let them get out of there. And he always speaks where he's spoken to. I'm sorry that I'm boring you all right now. We are still online, we're still streaming. J-E-T-A-U-N. Who knows this person? I don't even know how to say this name. It's like Jet Jet Twan or G Twan. What is that? Talk to me. Who knows him? How do you know him? Used to be your drummer. You know him? Talk to me. It's fine, but you know him. I don't want to talk to the pastor. I want to talk to somebody in his age group. You know how to reach him? He
He's born on January the 26th. Text him and see if that is so, because if not, we'll move forward. Uh, while you're texting, how old are you? Huh? 27. We're going to eat what you eat. You look 12. Look young as long as you can. You'd be surprised how, how much people paying to look young. After you text him to tell him I'm talking to him, tell him he can go do what I'm about to tell you to do. Number one, you may not want it so somebody else can get it, is you have to go look for new transportation. Now the issue is your license. Look how quiet everybody You have a license? Do you drive a little fast or a little? You want me to tell it or you tell it? Mr. 27. God says, tell him, I'm going to give him in the next 40 days whatever he wants, but he must walk the straight and narrow. You don't have to be perfect, but God said, I demand more out of his life. I can talk to you. That's your member. I demand more out of your life now. I demand more out of your life. I demand, say, of the Lord. I'm going to prophesy and let y'all go more out of your life the devil would seek to devour you but God says since a child my hand was on his life so when you call him tell him anyone text him anyone he's ever offended whether he wanted to or not to apologize when he does tell him everything concerning car place to live is going to be released to him like it's his birthday and his actual birthday is coming up find out when he born I'm from New York that's where I'm from to the woman in the fuchsia pink where are y'all from Denver where are you living I want to say to her do you know her all right I don't know God knows but not me that's why I'm asking See, I don't like when prophets are used and then they act like they know everything. And I hear three or four of you, even the same one upset over here. Well, if God's speaking, don't he tell you everything? He asked Adam, where art thou? Did he know? You don't have to look away. You can look at me. God asks questions to things he already has the answer. You're my tasala kupataria. You're, you're, you're about to get a new place to live. God said, I gave them a temporary miracle already, but tell them this one is permanent. This one has everything your heart desires. And I don't know what he means. He said, tell them if they scream, I'm doing the house and the church at the same time. Not one at a time. Oh, I like when people praise for other people. I like when people praise for other people. About 2.8 miles when you go home is some property. Now, I don't have to preach. You know how many great preachers are in this building. There are enough preachers in this building to set the block on fire. Because you've been faithful over few things and because you've had to restart twice. God says in baseball, it's not two strikes in you out. God said you're about to hit a home run when you run home. God's about to show you he's in your corner and anyone that knows what a Shabbat praise is or how to utilize it. 
What's that? Last, what's that? Last name Lucas? Who's Lucas? Oh, there's two of them? Which one is Janice? I want you to prepare yourself for the most powerful podcast known to women. God says, God says that the full doors for your ministry breakthrough on platforms have not come yet. He said, but they are right around the corner. The way you look and the hell you've been through don't match. You should not be alive. I'm going to be frank with what God is telling me. You shouldn't even believe God exists. It is a shame that people are jealous of the wrong person. Yeah, got quiet over here again. You must not for the next 60 days focus on your enemies at all. They don't exist. You will employ them. If you find a Holy Ghost filled publicist with secular acumen, business acumen, you will see a book become a doc documentary. God said to put it on the pages was good, but it didn't do what it was supposed to do. God says, I'm going to put it on the screen. I'm going to let people see what it is to go from trash to treasure. Y'all ain't talking. Are y'all happy upstairs? Because I can't hear you. There's some things, Sister Janice, that I cannot say. All things are lawful but not expedient. But I will say this. I envy you. Because I don't think that I could have handled certain things the way you did. I'm not sure if I was a woman, I would have made it back from that pit that they put me in. Your hurt will no longer lead you on your journey. Because you're still overprotective. But God said, tell her she can let down her guards. Because I will fight on her behalf. And someone with a loud mouth, just clap your hands and praise the Lord. You may be seated and we'll stand after I give honor. Then we'll get your Bibles and I'll do my Baptist uh, preaching. But I want you to look at a neighbor and I want you to say two words to them. If they don't get excited, don't talk to them for the rest of the service. Just look at them with all power and tell them you're next. One more time, shout across the room, you're next. Sometimes the Holy Spirit does not have to call you out. All he has to do is call you up. Where's your church, Reverend Doctor? Stand up, Denver also. You Denver too, now you're San Antonio. I think that's what I heard. Uh, if I told you that God says he is putting, I don't know how he said, he is, he is tilling the ground of Denver. He said, I've even allowed some to be called home to make room for who's next. God said, I needed to talk to him before he made a final decision about relocation. There is something, and when, and when I say this, and let me say it like this, and two folk talk to me, not that you're there, not, but a prophet is without honor in his own country. And it is very difficult when a man grows up in a movement of God, and then God gives him without honor publicizing a prophet for a wife. 
Sometimes we function in the Holy Ghost, but not in the position that the Holy Ghost has actually given us. Like this woman is a prophet, your wife. Where's your wife? She won too. One knows it, the other one does not fully embrace. At all. The only way that the devil got through Adam was talking to a wife who wanted what was best for him, but did not know how to function in that power. She didn't do that to fool her husband. She did it because the voice said he'll become better. He'll become a god. Jezebel is not a demon. No spirits were in her, doth the Bible say. Her problem was she killed any man that came against her boo. Now, some of y'all done got quiet on me now because y'all got Jezebel bad, but at least she got a husband, never slept around, helped her husband build a business. The only thing wrong with her is serving the wrong God. It was not makeup. It was not cosmetics. It was not a short dress. God wants to make you a ministry with one church in two locations. Because one church is for demonstration. The other church is for education. I need your wife to correctly posture herself to make sure that the devil knows who she is. She will only be released if you push her. A lot of men are great, but they're intimidated. Not you, but by powerful. Y'all don't want to talk no more. About time you get home, I want you and your wife to go on a 24-hour fast, just one day. Spend time together that day. Don't get deep like the spooky folk and be speaking in tongues around the house and praying. No, just... Just don't eat. God said, I'm going to feed you something and then I'm going to make her talk about it. So I can show you how this works. She'll be speaking about something and you will explain it. God said, I'm about to merge your ministries. To where when one starts speaking, the other one will be able to complete the sentence. And I want to say one more thing to you, sir. And then I want 30 folk to jump and clap who got sense. God said, give him four months, you'll be on the road to debt free. There will be no debt. Are you happy or you're not? Be seated. There's a woman in this church that's going to be a f filthy rich in her future. Name, your name is like T-A-M-E-Y-A. -E like Tamia. No, no. I know your, your name. This is T-A-M-E-Y-A. Y'all see my members trying to get that prophecy? I don't blame them. If you said Todd with one D, I'm taking it. Get my name wrong, just get my prophecy right. Yo. The Lord has graced this fellowship. Hear me, let me say it first, then you can applaud and scream. I think people who rule well and who are real in ruling don't get enough encouragement. Especially as an African-American woman. Minority twice. But I know behind closed doors, if the devil could have discouraged her to make her quit, she would have quit by now. But she's an on Christ, the solid rock I stand type of leader. And I want you all to stand for the presiding prelate of this reformation, the Honorable Bishop Robin. E. Franklin, can y'all get as loud as you can? Uh, 
Come on, sustain it. To the executive pastor of our home church, overseer Sonia Mixon. To the host pastor of this church, Dr. Keith Odom. And now clap your hands for the success of your neighbor and let's go to the Bible. The book of Acts. Boy, I enjoyed you tonight. I don't know your name. I enjoyed you tonight. Woo. I want to thank God for Elder Charles Carey, the director of our choir, and his lovely wife, Lasanti. Can y'all thank God for my church, period? I won't have anyone stand, but just thank God for them. I am a pastor who loves his church. They have no reason to love me because I'm the hardest pastor to sit under in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty, magnificent name. That if you're not cut out for me, you will run as fast as you can. I've not opened the doors of my church in three months. I ain't took in no members. No, because I know I ain't the one right now. Mm -mm. <laughs> Acts chapter 28. Thank God for our musicians that have come along. I don't hear my, these Levites to support their pastor. Thank you all. 28 verses 1 through 6. Now, if I can get two pastors and the rest of you that's uh, happy in God to talk to me. This won't take long at all. Acts chapter, flick your Leslie switch. Acts chapter 28, I used to play so I can hear everything. Thank you. Verses one through six. Let me say this prematurely for anyone who was screaming. That is, whatever you're in that's trying to kill you, you will be out of it by midnight. Now, this story is not about Paul and Silas. It's the wrong chapter for that. But I am guaranteeing every person that came with the spirit of expectation that by 12 midnight, whatever has not finished you will start working for you. An enemy will become an employee. What did it say? It remains then. It says, and I'll make your enemies your footstool. And what some of you won't talk, because I want to have Baptist church, is a footstool is not to be killed. It's to help you reach what's out of reach. Please keep them bright lights on back there. It's to help you reach something. So some of you are avoiding your steps. In order for those talking, bless him, in order to step up, you must step on. And Lord, the section that talks to me the most build up their credit scores and everything because we need you to do great things in 2024. And to prove what I said about getting out of it tonight, the scripture opens by saying, and when they were escaped. And when they were escaped, thank you, Bishop Johnny Sanders, I'm sorry. And when they were escaped, they knew that the island was called Melita. The barbarous people showed us no little kindness for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold, which means they never liked me, but the conditions made them help me. I want to talk to stop trying to make folk like you. Just help. Just let them help you meet your conditions. 
not, see, y'all not ready, but I'm going to I'm not trying to make friends. I'm trying to make funds. Because if you have a lot of friends while you have no money, you'll never have money. Because you're going to be the one always treating them. And when you're in a certain situation, you can't find them. Tell somebody, tell them, I've been there. So certain people are helping you just because of your present condition. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, he laid them on the fire. And out of nowhere, there came a viper out of the heat. Fastened on his hand. When the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said amongst themselves, no doubt. This man is a murderer whom though he escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Hello, kingdom fellowship. He shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. And the world can't do me. That's too old for a certain generation. How be it they looked when he should have swollen. And if not at least swollen, falling down dead suddenly. But after they had looked for a great while. I want you to look at somebody and say it with power. This is part of my hoop later on. Tell them you better check me out. People are observing you closely. You call it nosy because they're really trying to figure out not your business. They're trying to figure out how you're living. But after they looked for a great while, they saw no harm come to him. This is where I'll be preaching in about 28 minutes. They changed their minds. And said that he was, and this is legitimate, not a capital G God, but a product of God. Look, somebody tell two people, if that's your friend, tell them I'm a product of God. You may be seated. I have no fancy topics. I wish I did. So I'm going to simply give two topics. You jump on two, you get two blessings. One is from back in the 80s. It's simply called Shake It Off. Look somebody while you're talking and tell them Shake It Off. Most folk in church that don't move ain't got no moves to make. My grandmother said, you've got to move. I'm shocked at some of you old saints. When the Lord gets ready, you may be high. I'll leave it alone. You may be low. You may be rich or they didn't know how to say or someone poor. But when the Lord gets ready, You've got to move. The subtopic, I heard one of my sisters who I'm very close with, one of the Clark sisters, who's one of the greatest female preaching voices in the world, Dorinda. She said in a song for 30 folk who would jump quick, I am still here. Watch it, bitch. You can join me and preach at the end, so have your pretty gold mic prepared. I am still here. You know the rest. What's the rest? That's not my time, but what's... It's by the grace. How 
many of you know you shouldn't be doing as well as you are right now? But you know things are about to get better. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I tell my Shia, I don't believe. I thought I had to church. He's brought me this far. Some through the waters. Some through the floods. Some through great trials. No, don't worry. I ain't going to stop till you talk, but all through the blood. I've had some good days. And I've had, I don't feel no joy here, some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And I've had some sleepless nights. But oh, when I look around. And I think things over. All of my shamai, my good days. They outweigh. My bad days. I only need a hundred. I won't complain. Why? Because God's been good to me. Inform five people with power and passion and tell them God's been mighty good to me. Even though my weary eyes cannot see, he's been more than this world could ever be. He's been good. He dried all. Forget that weeping may endure for a night. Those who are sanctified, finish it. But joy comes in the morning time. This story is very interesting. Be seated. This story is very interesting. Because now we got about eight or nine mean muggers in here. But the rest of you, you look kind. You look like you have the love of God in your soul. But this is a season, maze where Jesus Christ is about to see how you act when your system has been infected. He's putting haters in your life to see whether they get a response. He's putting you in debt to see whether you lose your mind. He's letting certain temporary illnesses occupy your body to see whether you lose hope. I'm Atasha, I'm prophesying now. The things that all of us are going through for the past three to four years, they were just tests. Let me talk to real preachers and talk. How long can you live with an infection and not check out? How long can you keep smiling in a crying situation? Some of you are not talking because right now you, you are still caught on the prophetic. I wish he would just tell me about my son in jail. Just told you. Whatever, let, maybe I should also say this and two educated screamers jump. There's two ways to die, ingest and inject. When you ingest what's wrong, it's called poison. When it's injected, it's called venom. I wish I had friendly fellowship people. Why would you let what people say about you that don't do nothing for you infect you? The reason why they're constantly trying to poison your character, your name, your reputation is they wish they were you.
You're not going to bed thinking about them. You're not on their Facebook seeing what they're doing. They can't sleep at three in the morning scrolling on your page. Because people don't study serpents. Serpents study people. Not my son that be on so yeah. I do want to say this to my people too because soon I'm going to forget I'm here. I want to say this because I want to help everyone even watching by social media. And I want to say this to 30 folk who will jump and spin when the music's no longer playing. And that's this. You are worth being talked about. If no one's talking about you, you have no value. Whatsoever. You don't have to be bothering people for them to talk about you. Your name alone is threatening. Look at somebody with humility and say, I'm a threat and I always knew it. Y'all don't want to say it. Well, look at me. I'm a threat and I always knew it. But I'm from old school church. You can talk about me. Help me preach, young men, as much as you please. But the more you talk, my posture. Is to stay on my knees. I need 15 more minutes. Then I'll fly my kite. And I'll go on back to my domicile. Be seated. Now I also want to let you in on something. For five of you who are waiting on the hoop but won't receive help. You come to learn how to holler. But not how to walk with God. I want to say this to 30 screamers and that is regardless of how good the person near you look that might be your serpent the greatest gift of a serpent is called blending in the only reason why they're talking to you is they hate you but they need you Now, in the area where I live, I'm sure you live in a wonderful area, but in the area where I live, there's only white people in me, right? A bunch, it's just a bunch of white people. I hope none of my neighbors are watching, but it's a bunch of white people and me. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So I don't know nothing about snakes till I got here. I didn't know nothing about human snakes. Till I got here. Now New York got rats. We got rats the size of cats. We have rodents that will steal your food right under your nose and get a slice of pizza and go down to the A train. Y'all ain't talking. So when I moved and had a beautiful house, I went outside one day, I want to tell a story, and I recognized that on the outside of my beautiful home in my beautiful driveway, there was a serpent. And I said, oh, it's time to move. See, some of y'all ain't talking to me now. Some of y'all afraid of roaches and lizards, and so don't make me look bad. I, I ain't got no love for no snakes. Especially the ones on two legs. I ain't got no love for no snakes. So I ran over to my neighbor who has no phobia for snakes. He came over and, and the gardener, they grabbed the snake, took care of the snake, brought it towards me. I video and said, you want to hold it? I said, you've lost your absolute mind. Then they said, please, if you see this type of snake, do not kill it. I said, excuse me? He said, I know it's ferocious. It looks threatening because you're not familiar. Because some of you can't deal with people because you're not familiar. You're not familiar with being betrayed. You're not familiar 
with people making promises and breaking them. You're not familiar with falling in love with who's going to cheat on you. You're not familiar. This side just ain't talking to me right now. Y'all reminding me of my church. Sometimes to get victory, you must be familiar with betrayal. They gave me a quick talk. I don't know whether you were born here, but anyone who was should talk to me. They said, this is a black snake. It is not harmful. Mm. They said, you want to hold it? No. Then they told me what was more important for the first two folk to jump for real. You will see your bills begin to diminish. He said, God is so good that he makes one creature eat another one. And the Lord said, tell some of you, you ain't got to kill it. I got a creature. 24, what was trying to devour you will be devoured. Now, some of you ain't screaming because you that creature. Because I just informed you eight minutes ago, your serpent might be sitting right next to you. You pick them up like an Uber and they don't offer no gas money. Every time you go eat, I left my card. I'll give it back. Ain't nobody trying to take your man. Yes, you are. Most haters, when they say something, you got to reverse it. I ain't jealous of you. Yes, you are. I don't know who told you that. I love you. No, you don't. Let me say this for three screamers, then be seated. 2024 is the year to keep it real. I can help you as long as you tell me you don't like me. Let's just get that out the way. Give me the option. Because I'm from the street. Just tell me. Negro, I don't like you. But I need you to get this done. God is how much and die. God is going to give some of you, even my church, I got to get self, is going to give most of us the power to be necessary. Because when you need it, they can get what they need and throw you away. When you're necessary, you got to keep me. No more temporary friendships. No more temporary anything. God's about to put y'all in a season called permanent. But you'll never get to that season until you escape. I'm almost there. There's something you in that don't want to let you go. Then there's something you in that you don't want to let go of. Let me say it one more time. Because you're standing up, but you ain't speaking up. There's something you in that don't want to let you go. And on the truthful side, there's something that you're in that you don't want to let go of. It's bad when you and what you're doing like each other. Be seated and give me eight more minutes to talk this holy book. If any of us, and we will, survive what's been empowered to kill us. God said to tell you this. You will not just get victory over it. But there are a lot of people whose mouths you're going to shut up. God says any time this year that someone wants to talk about you in a negative way, I'm going to change their conversation and make them say something good about you. See, I'm prophesying as I preach, but some of you are sitting there like, this is not for me. Oh, 
You may not know this, but the one and only creature that God ever gave power to talk human language was a serpent. There's two ways people are getting close to each other. One way somebody say amen, and that is we have things in common. The second one, which is an infection, which is venomous, is a lot of people are friends with people because they identify through problems. So they really don't like you. They just need someone that's going through what they're going through. Yo, misery, 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 misery. They don't want me to teach. I feel some pressure. Some of you God's about to give you a season of full-time joy. But the issue is this. You must first understand that you became known not through the positive things people heard of you. The best way that God made you known was through the negativity. Oh, y'all. All publicity is good even when it's bad. You may not believe this. You're going to make me preach, dear heart. You may not believe this for those who can hear me. Nobody would have followed Jesus if everybody thought he was good. Front row ain't talking to me. Give me the second row. No, second row, third row. Y'all going to talk to the preacher. They heard that he was a wine bibbler. And the reason why they spoke that of our Lord and Savior for my church will start talking to me is because he hung around something that he did but did not indulge. You are bad somebody when people around you are wrong but they don't make you become wrong like them. That's because you are not the venom you are the antidote God is putting you around the infection not to become infected but to teach people how to be cured so he has to let them see you go through but they gotta stay around till you come out look at your neighbor see if they came for church tell them I'm coming out by 12 midnight did you hear him Coming out of what? Everything negative. I want to tell a story. I've been up now for about 38 minutes without the prophecy, but I want to tell a story. Back in my day, Elder Curry, we used to take pictures with a black and yellow camera called the Kodak camera. You remember that? You telling your age, but Kodak camera. 12 exposure, 24 exposure, 34 exposure. Let me quickly give you a rundown about this camera for 10 folk that'll catch me. It wasn't like your phone now, easy, snap, and it's there. You had to have a steady hand. You had to have focus. Y'all quite, you had to have a certain amount of light. And then power to snap. Then you had to have a certain level of faith to believe that what you took a picture of went from where it was into the camera. Then you have to trust that roll of film. They say do not open up until fully finished. I wish I could preach. And some of you don't know, last year took its final picture. But 24 is going to develop every picture. Now stay with me. Oh, the front row done came back to me. I just saw the color purple pass me them biscuits, Harpo. They back. You must then give that roll of film to the person and trust them to develop them. They then go into a dark room. So miracles are never done in the light. 
whatever side talk I preach to you. Miracles are done in the dark. And they don't start till they're out of your hand. Side full of preachers and elders. Beloveds, I love you all. The person then puts it in what's called a solution. See, these young people don't know what all this is. A solution. You mean what we can get now in two seconds, y'all had to wait days and weeks? And... Oh, yeah. That's because we were blessed with something that y'all ain't blessed with, and that is the process. That's why folk who got it right can't have nervous breakdowns. We don't backslide. We don't quit our churches. We don't just walk away from a marriage because we understand process. They put it in a solution. Let me hear a B, please. Yeah, okay. That was a weak B, so because we'll come back. It, 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 they, they put it in a solution. They begin to skillfully manipulate the film. Keeping their eyes on the clarity in the dark under a red light when it comes into focus they pull the film out they hang it let it dry they cut it they call you and tell you your pictures are ready to be picked up on this note I'm going to see who real praises are even though it's not a shout moment it's a rejoicing moment once they give it to you they give you all the pictures that came out clear and that came out not so clear the ones that are not clear is not the developer's problem it was your unsteady hand and your inability to focus I think I'm born, y'all. See a lot of head bobbing. Then they tell you this, and you'll see where I was going. Then back to the text. Then we'll fly if the wind should blow. Third of you catch this and never forget it. They tell you, here's your pictures. You open it up, you see all your pictures. Then there's something else in a plastic wrap. And you be like, so what are these? They said negatives. Oh, y'all, y'all missed it. They said, in case you lose the picture, you got to hold on to what's negative. Yeah, and some of y'all avoid negative people when they're the reason why you still have a picture. I'm only annoying it because you made me know I was by all the negativity that you brought into my life. I didn't even know I was this powerful. I didn't know I was this knowledgeable until I was approached by negativity. Your pictures are not protected, but your negatives are. So when people ask you, how did you get a house? I, I, I survived something negative. I'm about to close. I'm so sorry that I bored y'all on this trip, but y'all got my daughter coming tomorrow. She'll clean it all up. Unbeknownst to me, let me hear B again. Oh yeah, now that sounds like you know what you're doing. When you play behind a professional, be professional. Remarkable to me. That even though the text is about a snake biting a man, this is for Bible lovers, he didn't even get a break between the storm and the snake. Preach the Bible. 
Let me talk to three folk. Why won't God give us breaks? I just came out of one thing. I just came out of this and now that. They just survived a storm called Eurocladon. Y'all act like y'all love the Bible. And that's a place where two storms had to team up because one knew it wasn't strong enough. So when one person don't like you, they got to gravitate to a few more people and now they become Eurocladon. And just in case you escape chapter 26, we got a serpent waiting on you in chapter 27. Why do I have all these secret haters in the chapters of my life? I want to talk to 30 screamers, but your once upon a time is about to become you're happily ever after. I want you to just shake somebody and tell them, did you hear what he said? He said, my once upon a time is about to become my happily ever after. Your chapters are filled with chicanery and debauchery witchcraft and wizardry but no weapon you that are standing not talking you must be seated cause some of you ain't talked a whole sermon cause you're waiting to inject the venom but I might as well say this to 100 screamers we are impervious if we have not died by now we not going to die at all. How? I'm about to go to church. Do we go from a storm straight to a snake? No breaks. Don't even have a time to dry off. No change of garments. I'm going to drop it from the B in a minute, but stay with me, y'all. Let me also say this and see if 50 of you, I keep naming numbers because when God does that, he means to bless that number of people, but you're going to miss it. But capture this. It is funny that they only survive chapter 26. Y'all going to hear me? Because they stayed where they were supposed to. Except these abide in the ship. So all of you that ever wanted to leave ministry, leave your church, forget about everything, but you stayed anyway. That's why you survived that chapter. Because all you had to do to die was try to swim on your own. Some survived on broken pieces. Some on boards, others on splinters. The thing about Amashipai, the thing about Apostle Paul, for now only three people that ain't playing no more, is that even if he could swim, he couldn't because he had shackles on his hands, attached to his waist, attached to his ankles over 40 pounds of steel and didn't drown. He was floating with stuff that should have took him under. The devil's mad at some of you because your case says you should be going down. But your cause says I'm not through with you yet. Why don't y'all preach to somebody and act like you know how to preach and say neighbor, please be patient with me. Because God is not through with me yet. Come on, say it from there. When God gets through with me, 
I shall come forth as, let me hear that beat. Yeah, as pure gold. I shall live and not die. What's the reason to declare the wonderful works of the Lord? I'm coming, Keyshawn, in the land of the living. Look at somebody, get a little nosey and ask your neighbor, why you didn't die from COVID? Why you didn't die from cancer? Why you didn't die from AIDS? Why you didn't die from high blood? Why did God choose for you to live? And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Excuse the ill-mannered behavior of my crazy church. Because I told them stop doing this. And because he lives, all of my fears I'm playing between keys are gone. All of you new millionaires with no debt going to heaven say, because I know. Come on, hit that key. I know who holds my future. And life is worth living. Uh, Lord, just because he lives. Oh, 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 If you got to give them number system, they ain't in the Holy Ghost. Don't talk to them. Just let them find it. That he does. I'm going to church now. What any human being would do. I just got out of a situation that demands that I dry off. Before I get to the hoop, let me help one more time and say this to 50 loud screamers. Your way will not work at all. Even if you're taking the proper step, God says, I want you to get no credit for this. I'm sorry, associate pastor, that you're a little tired from work, but he starts a fire. Before the church can get to the place of deliverance, y'all got to go back to starting fires. Too many watered down saints. Too many quiet passive saints. Back in the day when the devil stuck his head out, mother would say the blood of Jesus. Oh, eh, yes, and somebody would also say, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. He's drying off. And in the midst, we're about to go home now, musicians. Of drying off. Something could not stand the fire. It attacked the one who started the fire. Most of you that are under attack is because you're still on fire. You broke, but you on fire. You got fired from your job, but it's not taking the joy out of your soul. I wish I had 200 people now. But I want the devil to know that you made, I got to close, a mistake. 
Because you let me live where I should have died. Uh, yeah. Before we go to old Pentecostal sanctified church. Find out whether the one near you is a servant or a serpent. <laughs> Look them in the eye and say, oh neighbor, how did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? Now, that neighbor should have an answer. And that answer is, no matter how hard life has been, God is still who he says uh, he is. Shake somebody and see if they get with you and tell them before midnight, I'll have a testimony. My testimony will be that God has brought me out all right. Yes, Lord. Shake a neighbor to the right or the left of you and tell them, I know. I said, I know that many have been in my shoes and did not make it out of it. But you're looking at somebody who's proof that God is still able. You ought to, you ought to look at a neighbor and clap your hands and say, he's still able. he able but God will do exceeding abundantly above us that you ask or think now I don't want y'all touching nobody no more I want you looking around and find who's on your side and say neighbor
Asia and listen. The The serpent fastened onto his wrist. Its fangs went two inches deep. It would not let him go until it released all the poison. Boy, if you scream on this, you got it. Because he only has one chance. I want you to tell your neighbor the devil's already had his chance. But tell him I'm still here. And it's by the grace. It's by the grace of God. Yes, Lord. Fasten. Come here. His wrist is not available. Fasten. Refused to let go. All the people, y'all, we're about seven minutes from closing. Scream on this. They sat by. Waiting to judge. They were waiting to say, didn't I tell you? I knew it would catch up with him or her. The Bible said the hater said he may have survived the storm, but he won't survive the snake. Would not, I'm using you. We're about to get there. Wouldn't let him go until it released all of the evil, all of the hatred, all of the lies, because it only has one chance. Amashande want to say this to folk with the Holy Ghost God said the reason why it's all happening at one time is there's no more after this and I see some of you stop some of you are saying now that's the part I don't like I hate when preachers hype people up and say no more give me a scripture I'm going to give you the scripture and see if ten folks scream if you know the Bible the Bible said and the Egyptians you see today And I'm telling you, whatever you're going through today, you will never have to go through it another day in your life because you survived back to back the storm and the serpent. You survived the sea and dry land. Watch it. I love all of your support, but catch it, we're about to close. released everything the people sat back and because they knew what type of serpent it was let's see if some men scream they said this should take a few minutes then minutes became hours whereas they used to hate you they now are admiring you because they're saying ain't no way in the world somebody can go through this and still turn out the way that they're turning out. What they could not assassinate, they're about to admire. Come on, don't cause no fights, but tell your neighbor, go on and tell me you admire me. Just go on, tell me you admire me. You've heard all the negativity about me. Do I look like what you heard? Just tell me. 
that you had a point of changing your mind. My last point, fastened. The Bible said, he look at me, don't let a serpent talk to you. He shook it off in a certain direction into the fire. He basically tells the serpent what your great grandmama said and to those who screamed for five seconds at the start, he said, go back where you came from. He jumped out of the fire and he had to go back to fire. From hell you came. Oh, yeah. From hell you shall return. The text closes with this. Look at me, all of you who will be terrific people of 2024. The text and this is where you can scream, no longer mentions a serpent. The Lord said, the devil's out of your story. It's very important. The only people in your story are you and a hater that better change his mind. And you're going to need to change your mind because when you get bit, I'm the antidote. It's called anti-venom. I close here now. It's called anti-venom. Are you learning something? It's called anti-venom. This is where your claps and mature praises should work. There was a man, two men, one named Bill and one named Teeth or, or, or Freeze. These two men who live for real, one still living today, one died in 2011. They literally shot themselves with every snake poison possible. They died nearly 40 times. But they continue putting the poison or the venom in their system. They did it so many times, I'm going to see you, that now they became immune. They took it until they couldn't take it no more. Oh, yeah. They took it and took it and took it. People started getting bit by serpents for which there was no antidote. The things that killed these two men or tried made them rich because now people had to come to them for their blood. Oh, yeah. Because in their body was the answer to what was trying to kill everybody else. God said, I'm about to pay you for every attack, for everything that happened. Because what God actually did was put in you what everyone else will need. Don't let them have it for free. Now, I just answered 50 people who didn't say nothing. I'm just nice to everybody. Be nice, but get paid. It ain't about money, it's about your misery. How many times have you been bit being nice? Because to be nice, you got to stretch out your hand. And you're stretching it out to who a person who you don't know what's going to jump out of her. Close and look at me. Don't let no one talk to you. Because a serpent knows that we can talk right after church. Why you want to know where I'm going to eat? I'm eating. Watch now. I'm acting the sermon. They, they keep looking. He made it past five minutes. He made it past a half an hour. He made it past an hour. They start talking to each other. Uh, there's something different about this guy. Then those who were intelligent, even though they were barbarians, said, he's a product of God. He knows how to take what was meant for his evil and turn it for his good. We're closing, but you don't look happy now. I asked God, why didn't Paul die? God gave me two answers, and one is simple, but if I were you, I would jump and scream. He said, because he didn't have time to. 
See, that's for grown people. You don't have time to die. He didn't have time to die. The second reason was for theologians. He said, when I sent Paul on the trip, I was sending him to witness me to a particular person. So Paul's mind was not on what was happening during the journey. He knew that if God called me to get there, everything on my way is just a part of my story. Oh yeah. He had to go see Agrippa. He had to go before Caesar. Y'all can't die. You've not made it to your finish. Now, you that ain't talking now, it's because you already died. But some of you, you understand that you could have given up a long time ago. But the Lord told you in the way of a feeling, shake it off. Shake until all that stuff that's been trying to penetrate your heart falls off. Mashandai. All right, he's here. In a different way. I want, I want you to... Um, Hold the hand of someone you trust, whether you know whether they're trustworthy or not. So Moses takes a rod. I want to prophesy to you again, but it's a different type of prophecy. When you move into your new edifice and do the things of God and start getting everything that you deserve, Remember what I'm going to tell you, then I'm explaining it prophetically. When you have a staff that's out of hand, it becomes a serpent. I'm going to say it one more time. Sometimes people love us, but our staff is actually not a product of who we are. If you and I are mean by nature, the staff should be nice. All right, I must got a whole church full of angry people. But the only time Moses' staff became a serpent is when it was out of his hand. Watch now, because y'all see all snakes is evil, but snakes and men have been getting together for a long time. The difference is for 80 of you who know you're going to be rich is keep the snake, just know how to handle it. He said, if you're going to have a serpent, know how to pick it up. Some of y'all are picking it up by the mouth. You got to pick it up by the tail. You got had because you went for the mouth. He goes to Pharaoh's house and says, and I'm closing with prophecy, let my people go. That was the message. The people need to be free. Pharaoh said, no, Moses took his staff, young men. What's your name? Talk loud. I want you to run to the door and when I tell you, and just shout yes. You will have one of the greatest ministries of your generation. Because there are some young folk in here that know they're gifted, but God said yours is given. Run to the door and shout, yes, Lord. <laughs> Purnell. Purnell. Touch him. Young man, you went to college? Because when you were jumping, I saw the balance go to zero. God said, now you can go back and finish. Y'all ain't talking. I saw the balance go to zero. See, 
I only did that so he could shake something off. Listen, as I'm closing with this, he goes to Pharaoh, let my people go. He throws the rod on the floor. And when it's out of his hand, y'all remember what I said? What happened? It becomes a serpent. Pharaoh was not moved by it, nor is this new generation moved by miracles, rebuke, or anything. Pharaoh claps his hands. Two of his guys come out. They got two rods. They throw them on the floor and they become serpents. If I get most of you to scream on this after, I'll be happy. The difference was this time, the staff that used to be against Moses is working for Moses. And one of Moses' rods swallows up both of those rods. And the Lord said, I'm about to put people that were against you in your corner to fight your battles, to devour your enemy. Your battle does not start. God said, I'm going to put a devourer against another devourer. A serpent against another serpent. A liar against another liar. God said, you're about to get a front row seat to the destruction of your enemy. And he prepares a table for us. Hey. You called me, I didn't fully ask God anything, but I'm gonna tell you something, you're gonna run to the same door that Pernell ran to. And you're gonna tell God, I'm ready for my new home. The Lord says, when you move in your new house, all the other things will follow back to back to back to back to back. And someone with a loud mouth shout glory. See, some of you want a miracle, but you won't shake. God said, the power that you seek will begin with a new address. God said, I will determine who comes in and out. Then another new thing. I will determine who comes in and out. Then another new thing. I will determine who comes in and out. God said, but tell him, give me until August. Tell him it seems long, but it's right around the corner. Tell him when I finish, I'll make up for 11 years of delay. But tell him if he ever goes back, I can't come get him. Are you holding the hand of your servant or serpent? Because even if it's a snake, this one wants to work for you. Swallowed, look at me, swallowed both serpents. So then Moses reaches down, assistant, associate pastor, picks up his serpent by the tail, and it becomes a rod again. Here is for one prophetic person who let folk laugh at you, but I promise you this, and this normally does not happen. Whatever you praise them for, you're going to get it overnight. Hear this. It's good. No, no, no. No, no. I'm not going to another city. I hang around here. Somebody that's sincere going to get this overnight. He picks it up. The difference now in what's in his hand for those who will scream is it's now a triple threat. Some of you still praising God for double. I'm praising him for triple. So now Moses' rod has the power of God and the power of men. God said, I'm going to give you power and influence with me and with people. What I want to happen from heaven, I will get in someone from earth that may not even like you, but they're going to carry out my will. I'm going to make your serpent serve. I'm 
I close with this as you're holding the hand of a debt free child of God. Not being nosy, but are you debt free? Well, hold my hand because I am. Now, what I'm doing is I'm asking God to give you an impartation. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Once you get debt free, you're going to have more enemies. But you ain't going to lose no sleep. <laughs> my enemies increased, but my problems did not. Because God paid me to win. God's going to pay you to win. Yep, one day we're going to go to lunch. I just was downloaded with something personal. Hmm. But God grant her a heart's desire. You're holding the hand of a person whose credit score is going up 100 points. The Bible says a good name is chosen above riches. When your credit's good, sometimes your cash is not needed. Some people just want your influence on top of theirs. The Bible says we're closing. He shook it off into the fire. Young man who sang and did a great job at ex expediting this the service um don't think i'm a false prophet okay because i think you're healthy how long have you been married this what this march will be uh, do you own the house you're in you're renting huh what are you doing there, there you go, and you're giving them something. You're renting. The Lord said, I took them through three cycles of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch it. And the devil said, personally, you were feeling like a failure. Where do we go? I need to say some. Is he your member? He's oh, okay. He's a pastor. All right, because I got ready to tell you. That's why I asked, was he a member? Because the Lord says you're gonna have to encourage him to get ready to pastor. The Lord said he's pastoring, but it wasn't his season. He said he does not know it. I made him practice because rehearsal's over. Your wife needs to be a little more sensitive to the Holy Ghost because she's feisty. That's because she comes from holy a lineage. Some type of chosen person. You all have done everything that was the will of God prematurely. Every move you made was premature. But there are preemies who are born early that live. God has resuscitated certain areas in your life several times. He said, tell him, but he knew he was chosen even from the grandparents. I'm asking God to move up the date because the date I saw is still too far. And in watching you minister today, I felt, flick that Leslie, that you deserved it now. I'm gonna ask God to grant you whatever it is and make the process move aggressively. You're going to rent your own place, then the next year you're gonna own your own place, and then the next year, 
You're going to do something else. But the Lord said, also tell him, I'm repositioning his church. Let me give you how. Now, this is completely thorough. And if you scream, that's your wife then? The one in the pink. Okay, because I don't know whose wife is who, so claim them. And who's that? Good. Here you go. Don't get stuck on feisty. Then you're going to prove that you are. So stay with me. So this is what happens. We're in the right city at the right time, but we're catching no fish. Jesus then said, caught you any fish? They said, no. He said, cast thy net on the right side of the boat. And they caught a whole lot. I'm going to say this to you and maybe 30 folk will scream for them. God says, it's not in a different town. It's on a different side of town. What city you in? San Antonio. It's not the wrong town. It's not dry there. You on the wrong side. Lord said, I'm going to give you so many members, but somebody in your church is going to have to speak Spanish. They can't join because they need to hear their language. I'm going to say something to you that's maybe two, three years down the road. Maybe God will put that on the express. Then I'm going to ask my church if nobody else scream the clap and scream like thunder. And that's this. God said, after you get it, you will sign. It'll be hard to pay for it. It'll be a little struggle. When it becomes very hard, you're going to be okay because there's oil under your property. So make sure... You claim the mineral rights. All right, last time, hold hands with somebody that looks happy. They might be a servant or a serpent, but they'll be a serpent serving. In the checkered shirt, in the checkered shirt up there, wave at me. See, I'm glad that you know it's you. There's other people with checkered shirts, but you know it was you. Are you married? Where is she? And who is she to you? And who is he to you? And who is he to you? Whether the family liked him or not, who is he to you? The Lord said the same home miracle they getting, y'all getting it also. But I got to say this. There's a new truck in your driveway. I don't hear nobody talking to that man. I want to say this without pointing to the person, but it's in the balcony. So I'm going to ask the entire balcony when I say this to go to praising God. There's somebody that's here at first. They wanted to leave. It's a man that wanted to leave, but he stayed. Wanted to leave again. It's not that it's too long, but then he stayed. It's just who he is. But the Lord said, because this person stayed tonight and did not leave. And this is where we rumble praise. God says in 48 hours, I'm going to delete all your prison record. Every last thing in there. And I know who it is. Is he here? Pastor, how are you? You're doing well. Thank you for speaking. Thank you for letting our sister use your facility. Thank you just for being a nice man. Now, let me tell you something. I don't know how this is going to happen. I have no inkling and no idea. 
God says, because of his vision and because it's so expansive and expensive, tell him, I shall do for him what at first I was going to do for the last owners, but I decided to wait till he arrived. He said, what was once impossible is now through the city and the state possible. The Lord said, give him a year and teach your people how to worship and keep tithing. The Lord said, I'm going to give you all the projects right next door to this property right here. God says, I'm going to give you all the way to the corner. Now, y'all mighty quiet. You're a little jealous, but I ain't jealous of the success of another person at all. God says, I want to make this area a kingdom city within the city. I want it to have everything. Residency, roofs overhead, shelter, mental health. I want to make this a one-stop shop. Now, I'm going to say this. This ain't God. When you get it, I want something. I don't know what it is, but I want something. Because what I see is humongous. Do you? I have no idea. Do you own? There's a parking lot. Do you own the property past the parking lot? All right. What you say? There is a white brokerage firm trying to get that. They're going to revisit you for the money. The Lord said, but if all of us praise for you now, I'll lock it in right now. I'll lock it. Last one, a little exhausted, but when I go to other people's churches, I try to give them all that I have. Prophet of God, I'm calling you by your office. Where are you from? San Antonio too. Who's your pastor? So you're a pastor. You are about to, and hear me clear, don't get nervous. God said you did it before. One more time would help, won't hurt. Won't be far, but you're going to relocate. Again. Anywhere you choose. God said, tell him I'm waiting on him. God says the ministry I gave him is too unique for where he is. And I've got sheep for him that is not of this fold. God said, I got to honor the prayer of a mother. This Boy, we got some insensitive people. God says, I've held back the answer of her prayer for years. And now I must answer it. First thing I'm going to do is give him a healing that will never ever be broken. Tell him by midnight he is healed from the crown of his head. Y'all a little jealous to the sole of his feet. Where the devil said die, God said live. Then he said tell you this. This is where I'm going to sound like a false prophet like I told you. You have to go to your room and understand this. The Lord said, tell him this, where he failed in a certain relationship, now I'm going to reverse it. He said, the reason why I'm making him get away is there's still poisonous and venom. Yo. The Lord said, this time he shall succeed without doubt, without regret, and I shall grow his family and his church at the speed of light. Y'all ain't talk. I shall show him that I am a God that cannot lie, nor am I son of a man that I should repent. What I promised your mother, I'm about to do it right now. And someone with a loud mouth. Now, I don't know my hashiatai. Before we amando shekitakai. The only reason why I'm going to let you do it and wait on me is because your victory is in your feet. 
God said, normally you'd have been dancing, but the prophecy is so inner to where you're worshiping. So God said, I'm going to make the others dance till your feet move. You that need a miracle within 48 hours, you have one minute to start dancing for the Lord right where you are. One, two, three. because you can but if you really want to see God take the stuff off you that's been holding you back and you're tired of responding and swelling and you need God to do it before January is over you got 60 seconds to give him the dance of your life Thank you. 
you have a mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have a three word prophecy that will tell me whether you are serving or serpent. The three words are paid in full. Hallelujah.